death is something we are all scared of. Maybe we're not scared about the physical dying part, but maybe we're scared of dying and of being proud of what we did while we were still alive. My aunt was 35 years old when she passed away this year. She had a lot to live and a lot to discover. She wasn't married, didn't have a boyfriend, and she wasn't definitely thinking about having children yet. When she died, I lost a sister, and now they're half of me. And that got me wondering, am I really living the life I always wanted to live? 56 million people die in a year by various causes. Automobile accidents, fatal diseases, aging, and the list keeps going. But in a sense, how many, how many people die in a year and are still here with us? I'm talking about people with severe traumas or any type of depression. 17.5 million Americans are affected by it. I'm not here to solve the problem of depression or how not to get sad when someone dies. But I'm here to offer you a solution to stop worrying about death so often and actually start living. So here are my tips. Have you ever felt that weird feeling when you look at yourself in the mirror and you ask yourself, oh my gosh, I'm aging so fast? <laughs> and then you wonder, when did time pass by so quickly? Well, I got a solution for you, and that is the bucket list. What is a bucket list? It is a list where you list things you want to do throughout a year, throughout a month. It has to be things you love to do, things you enjoy doing. And when you do them, you feel proud of yourself. Because that's what life is about, experiencing things you love and things you will be proud of at the end. You can do from eating this meaningless hamburger to going to this place or just buying this thing you love the most. All of that is your physical evidence if you have really done what you love. And the best part in this is that you can include your friends in the process. So that is my second tip. Keep your relationships. Friends are the light in the darkest of rooms. They're your listeners when you most need them. They're there when you most need them as well. So how can you get all of that opportunities out of your friends? First of all, start getting the opportunities. The friends can give you any job opportunity or any opportunity if so. At the same time, you have to keep those friendships alive. And, that's, and that is the most important thing you want to do throughout life. My tip here is, I've done it myself, is when you wake up in the morning, list three names of people you want to reach out to. It can be a person, long no seen person, or someone you haven't seen in a while, or someone you have behind you, or even someone you just saw yesterday. The important thing on this exercise is that it makes them feel valued. It makes them feel like they're worth it. And that keeps that fire alive in your friendships. That's one, of you want, that's one of the things you want to keep throughout your whole life. My third tip is live in the moment. A study from Harvard University said that 47% of your time, you're thinking about the past or the future. Things you're going to do the next day. The solutions to a problem you don't even have yet. Not living in the moment can, ca can cause stress and anxiety, making it, for you to live your, making it harder for you to live your day to day. How can we change that? Take 10 minutes of your day and just observe. Observe what you have around you, conversations you're listening, faces you have in front of you. Because at the end, you don't want to look back and just remember a TV show or a cell phone number. But you will actually want to remember experiences. And my fourth tip of tonight is live up to your own expectations. 18% of the population works on the things they love. The other percentage just works for money. The only actionable item here is live up to the things you promised yourself. You have to find your passion. You have to find the things you love to do. You have to finish your bucket list. Because at the end, you have to start building the person you want to leave behind and be proud of. So I have a question for you. If you were to die today, what will be the word people will use to describe you? Now that you have that word in your mind, 
repeat it a couple of times and ask yourselves, is that really the word I want to be described with? When I did this exercise, my answer was no. But we can start changing that. You have to start creating the person you want to leave behind. You have to start creating from now the memories you want people to, be, to remember you with. Because at the end, the only thing we take with us and the only thing we leave behind are the memories. So I will encourage you, instead of worrying about death so often, start setting a goal of living your life as meaningful as possible. Thank you very much.